Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We ask you to shine light on your word. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So be it. All right, we're here in natural catastrophes and earthquakes now. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do it with introductions or what. I don't know how it's going to work. Mm-hmm. I'll just read. Yep, let's, let's get started. Let's get started. 54, humanity. If all the earth efforts you have dedicated to persecuting bloody wars had been dedicated to executing humanitarian works, your existence would be filled with the blessings of the Father. But men have used the riches they have accumulated to sow destruction, pain, and death. Yeah, so we took his, we took knowledge of his creation in order to harm ourselves. That's all we wanted. We didn't, we, if we had a wanted to help people, we would be so much different as a humanity. But we didn't. That ain't what we was interested in. You know, it's like, First thing we wanted to do was learn how to kill each other. This cannot be the true life, that which must be led by those who are brothers and the children of God. This form of life is not in accord with the law I have written in your conscience. What does it mean by the law that is written in our conscience? Well, Is is it different from the law that he gave of us at Mount Sinai or no it's not different it's 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 more encompassing I would say the, the law written on our conscience would be of a broader span law it would cover um, um, a, a, a large range of, 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 of stuff whereas the laws that were written on the tablets, they, it was only a few of those. There was only a few of those that were written down. And I guess one of the ways you know it is because you have the laws that was written on the tablets, but then when you read other books, you find more laws written. You read the New Testament, you find, you know, additional stuff that, that was added. And so at some point, it looks to be all correct. Like, yeah, we should have known to do this. And when you examine your conscience, you feel like that. But see, the problem is, is that our conscience hasn't been dominant in our life. We haven't really been able to hear it. So although it might have been yelling, hey, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, we we ignored it, you know, thought it was, you know, something just trying to interfere with our pleasure, and we went on ahead and did it. Therefore, we needed written down laws. We had to have them written down so somebody can, you know, roll that document up and hit us with it. 56. To make you understand the error in which you live, volcanoes shall arise, fire shall surge from the earth to exterminate the evil seed. Yeah, so, and, you know, it's, I hesitate to talk on this stuff a lot because, you know, he says he targets people, and then you say, well, a volcano is a very targeted thing, and so are all those people in those areas evil? I wouldn't dare say that, but, you know, got to remember that he that his justice is precise is a very is very precise so but what he's talking about is all of the stuff that's happening around the world now you know a lot of volcanoes going on out there a lot of earthquakes and this these these things haven't really gone on all throughout history they may look normal to us especially we're a millennial aged kid you know you know, our parents and grandparents knew about earthquakes, so they must have been going on for a long time. But no, 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 no. My grandparents and great grandparents, they didn't know much about earthquakes and volcanoes. They didn't. This is new. The winds shall be unleashed, the earth shall tremble, and the waters shall sweep over regions and nations. That's talking about a tsunami when he's talking about the water sweeping over the nations. Winds, hurricanes, earth, her, uh, volcanoes. Yeah, all of this stuff is going on now, and it's just increasing. It's, in, it's, it's, um, it's here. We're here. Mm-hmm. And that way, the elements will show their resentment of man. They have broken with him because man has been destroying one by one the bonds of friendship and brotherhood that tie him 
to the nature that surrounds him. Now, this right here, I think, is extremely important, or maybe it's just that it's so new. I, I kind of understood this this morning, what he's saying here about how nature is upset with us because we broke the bonds of brotherhood with our brothers. Because we are messing and being foul to each other, the earth now has a problem with us. That's why, you know, the creatures don't don't listen to us or obey us. That's why the wind don't listen to us or obey us. See, the Messiah was here to be our example. And when he told that wind to stop, that, that was him showing us that we have that same power. But go out there and try to stop. He said, well, why, why was it still going to mow down my house? It's because of what he's saying here. We have broken the bonds of friendship and brotherhood. Remember in the other chapter where it said we think that being, you know, selfish and is 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 natural. New way of life, yeah. No, no, we didn't broke the bonds, and now we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Fifty-eight. Many calamities will come upon mankind within nature. There will be disturbances. The elements will be unleashed. Yeah, we're talking about a lot of stuff. And he, he's going to give it to us here. We're talking futuristic stuff here too, guys. He, wanted, he said, well, how do these guys think they're going to tell me what happened? This is the scripture. This is the Bible. This is the holy word of, of God. This ain't, you know, man and, you know, making up stuff and all of this kind of stuff. This is the Bible. And if you have a problem with the Bible and you, you know, don't really read it or really believe it, the scriptures, then you know that's a whole nother thing. But if you believe the word of God, then you, you, you this is what we're talking about. This is this is everything that you were told was going to happen in books like Ezekiel, books like Daniel, books like Revelations, books like Matthew, all of them. As well, yeah. Every one of them was pointing to this time period. Now, the only thing about the Third Testament of the Bible, which is what we're coming from now. The Third Testament of the Bible is it it has a lot of spirit and truth in it, meaning it's it's here to let us understand those things that were, that we had trouble with previously. And now we're getting a wrap on it. It's gonna be rough, guys. What we're talking about is gonna be rough. Go ahead. Fire will devastate regions, the waters of the river will change their course, the seas will undergo changes. Now that's just that's talking about down the fires. That's one thing, but all this river changing in courses, that sounds like earthquakes, something disassociated with fires. It, it's going to be rough. Seas are going to undergo changes. You say, well, what, what, kind of, what, what kind of change could a sea undergo that we're going to notice? They could, sea could be doing all kinds of stuff under there, and we wouldn't even notice because it's you know, so far in the water. No, we're talking about the shapes of these things, the shapes of the seas. You know, like, didn't it used to be a continent sitting there? You know, where, where is that continent at now? It's gone. Or even um, drying up. Or drying up, or you know, another one appearing. It's like you're looking out your, out on your your uh, beach beach side view, expecting to see nothing but ships, and you're looking out there. On, ain't that Atlantis out there in the water somewhere? You know, where did that big island come from? There will be regions which will be buried under the waters, and new lands will appear. That's what we're talking about right there. Mm -hmm. Many creatures will lose their lives. And even those being inferior to man will perish. See, that's what, that's what, you know, it's kind of one thing that's kind of new to me, too. You know, I thought this was Jacob's terrible that it was all about us on this planet. No, it's every element. He says that the, the, the dead, he says that the living are going to envy the dead. The living are going to envy the mm. dead. But not only humans, but he said all animals. Could you imagine all animals, dogs walking around wishing they were dead? How bad is that? Mm -hmm. Now we ain't talking about you no know, economic foolish crisis or whatever. You know, when the, when the, when the birds want to die, they, they just drive. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's pretty bad. The elements await only the hour to unleash themselves upon the world to cleanse and purify the earth. It's on the way. They, it, it, it's already lined up. While all of these people are sitting around talking about God going to do this and God ain't going to do that, it's already lined up. The more simple and proud a nation, the harsher shall be my judgment. Now, oh, I'm sorry, I'm cut you off too quick, but and now he's talking about the the, uh, the uh, judgments of the different nations. There's a chapter way back in the end of this book. I think it's chapter 50, 64, chapter 64, 63, 64, 65, which is at the end of the book. It talks about seven nations and what's going to happen to these nations. You know, and, you know, some, like I said, some of them seem like they will get to watch it on television, while others, it seems like they're going to be nuked. Mm -hmm. Other ones, it seems like they're going to 
get all of these plagues and strange diseases, like that's going to cover their continent or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but he's saying, you know, the prouder that, it, it, like we're saying about the Hiroshima, it's his judgment. So it's because those nations were proud. And, and the things that happened to those people were the proudest people there. It will be necessary for the cup of bitterness to reach it before it will be able to hear the voice of conscience, the voice of law, and divine justice. All will be for the salvation and eternal life of the spirits which are whom I seek. Yeah, see, this is the purification. So that this is the stuff that's necessary to purify us. We are this bad a people. We have... We have become this far out of control that we need this type of stuff in order to bring us back around where we're supposed to be. Talking about nuclear bombs, talking about earth, earth changing earthquakes, you know. Talking about stuff coming from outer space, you know. This is this is the this is what's necessary in order to purify humanity. Humanity has gotten this bad. Yeah. Sixty-two. The flood that cleansed the earth of the human impurities and the fire that descended upon Sodom, you know them as legends. Yeah, the legend of Sodom and, and Gomorrah. Um, I don't, we don't know much about Gomorrah and what they were doing wrong. At least I haven't read a lot. But Sodom, that's where we get the word Sodomite from. And, you know, that's what they were engaged in in that, in that place. But the destruction only hit that, that area. The destruction only hit that area. And you say we know them as legends? Yeah. However, in this era, you will also contemplate how humanity will be touched as the earth trembles by the force of the air, the water, and the fire. And so he's letting us know that that type of stuff is coming from. That was fire. When they say fire and brimstone, when, when they look at, they found the city of Sodom. I don't know if they found Gomorrah, but they found Sodom. And what they found was sulfur, sulfur that, you know, had, that was burning. They could tell the, the way it still has its, its melt, has still melted or whatever. And they found bits and pieces of it, chunks stuck inside of rocks. It was sulfur that came from the sky. Fire, and brimstone is another word for sulfur. So you can look at those and say, yeah, okay, that's, that's how it works. That's what we expect. However, I shall again send you an ark, which is my law, so that those who penetrate in it may be saved. Yeah, so we're talking about we're talking about the ark, I mean, and we talked about that in the first class, and we're going to have to run. But we talked about that in the first class, how the ark was um, the law, the law talking about the commandments, the statutes, precepts, judgments, mm -hmm. ordinances, and then he said uh, brotherly love was the other other part of the law. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try to run. Let's try to beat it for we lose all power. Okay, 63. Not all of those who are on that hour of trial will say, Father, Father, will love me, but rather those who always practice my love for their fellow men, those shall be saved. So, yeah, the, the, he said everybody going to holler, Father, Father, like he was, he was talking about before, the atheist, at some point, he's going to start screaming for help, too, you know, and not everybody's going to love him. But look, he goes on to say it's those that, you know, have always practiced the law, meaning those that didn't wait to the last hour to start screaming, Father, Father, those are the ones that will be saved, you know. And that's what they need to learn down at that church that, you know. Practice love for my fellow, yeah, for your fellow men. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to be doing something. You can't, you can't just, you know, expect that the last time just to say God going to do this and God going to do that because mm -hmm. he, he's, he promises to let your, let your bodies fall on your gods. 64. A new flood will become unleashed that will cleanse the earth of human perversity. It will topple the false gods from their altars, destroy stone by stone the foundation of arrogance and iniquity, and erase every false doctrine and every absorbed philosophy. Yeah, and this flood we're talking about is anger, greed, hate, war. It's a flood of ridiculousness talking about something that's going to affect this earth so bad that it will never ever happen again it ain't never happened before now we're talking about the tribulation mm -hmm. and it's going to be enough like i said to erase all of the false doctrine all these you know people lying about the word people that don't believe in the bible people that you know um you know 
it's, it's all going away. It's, it's, it's all going away. 65. Yet this new deluge shall not be as well, as was that of the earlier area, era of water. For now the hand of man has loosened all the elements, both seen and unseen, against himself. He dictates his own sentence. He punishes himself. He does justice. This is, this is, uh, the Father, um, see, and, and that's one part we have to keep reminding ourselves. It's not the Father's vengeance. It's not his wrath that's coming upon us. It is the day of judgment. We are creating the wrath. We are creating the fury. We're creating these fires and these storms. We may be us that even knock some of these planets and continents and news have, have them floating off into the water somewhere. It's us that's doing this devastation. Well, I was thinking about 65 where it says um, that we, the man has loosened all the elements. At one time it was just the, the water with Noah, but now it's all on. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's going to be terrible. So the earth has earthquakes, the mm -hmm. fire, wind, all and it. water, all of it. All of it. 66. The elements shall cry out for justice, and upon unleashing themselves, they will cause portions of the earth to disappear, becoming seas, and seas to vanish where land arises. And we touched on this a little bit, how the continents are going away. The Revelation says this. The book, all the books of the Bible confirms this. This is, this is going to happen. The continents are going to disappear and move. Volcanoes will erupt to announce the time of judgment, and all nature will be agitated and moved. Now, no, now we're backing up a little bit. Well, uh, 66 is talking about you know earthquakes that shaking the loose planet and loose continents, but 67 is talking about an announcement of the time of judgment. It's talking about volcanoes. This is already going on. There are hundreds of volcanoes going off in the world right now. They have something called the Ring of Fire. You know, there's like a whole big volcano alley. And it's, and it's all going off at the same time. Pray so that you will know how to conduct yourself as good disciples. Because they will be, that will be the precise time in which the spiritual Trinitarian Marian doctrine shall be spread within the hearts. And this is what he's calling his doctrine. His new doctrine. Now, I don't, it's, it's like, it's not a religion. It's not a, um, it's, it's nothing like we've ever experienced before. I don't see why he even gave it a name, you know, other than to, to call it something. But he's calling it the spiritual Trinitarian Marian doctrine. Now, what this breaks down to is, is you know, because I had to go look it up. Spiritual is the opposite of material. So where we've always been material beings, we're now going to be changed to, mater to material beings. Spiritual. To spiritual beings. We're always being material, we're going to be changed to spiritual. Trinitarian being the all three gospels, all three documents, all three, and I shouldn't say gospels, but all three books. The Old Testament, which included the, uh, uh, the, um, which included the Pentateuch, which included the uh, Chronicles and Kings, which included the Prophets, and then the New Testament, which included... Uh, uh, the Gospels and Revelations and Corinthians and all them kind of books. And then the third the third part of the Trinitarian makes up the Third Testament of the Bible. It's the one that unlocks the other two. Marian is talking about Mary, not in the form of the Catholic Church and how they look at Mary, but Mary as the universal mother. It's, it's, it's a whole chapter on Mary being our universal mother which includes the earth and all nature and all of this thing. So what we're one of the things we're being changed to is kind of like these beings that's going to be more in tune with nature kind of thing. It's, it's the Marian part where we're, you know, nature is a part of our lives. It's not just something that's harming us. But we'll be able to control the elements, not unlike the Messiah did. And that's the new doctrine that he's talking about. Just to break that down a little bit, we did a class on it uh, a little earlier, if you want to refer back to that. But that's what it's called. Trinitarian Marian... Three quarters of the surface of the earth shall disappear, and one quarter only shall remain as a refuge for those who survive the chaos. You shall see the fulfillment of many prophecies. But going back up there to 68 now, look where he says that pray so that you will know how to conduct yourselves as good disciples, because that will be the precise time. So that would be the precise time. Now go back to 67 and what we were talking about, and you see when he's talking about these earthquakes and the volcanoes and all of that stuff, and that's when we're expecting the, 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 the that's when we're expecting God to, what, what are we expecting? We're expecting him to come back down here to the earth and rule over the earth? 
Well, that's when it, that's saying that's the precise time when that's going to start. Now, look down here in 69. It's talking about three quarters of the surface of the earth shall disappear. Right? Three quarters disappearing. Three quarters of the earth disappearing. Mm -hmm. And one quarter only remaining as a refuge for those that survived the chaos. This is talking about... This is talking about the earth going away. There's three quarters of it going away. Only a small part of it being left. Is it talking about it's disappearing or it was just be so uh, bad that <laughs> that it will be inhabitable? Mm -hmm. It does say disappear. It's going underwater. Okay. It's going underwater. It's not going to be there anymore. Okay. And, then, and then it says and new parts are going to appear. Mm -hmm. New parts that you know we ain't never heard of. Now you can't imagine... Nobody trying to run over there and live over there because, you know, it's going to wash up from under the water somewhere. How long has it been under the water? Right. But, you know, and, and Revelations backs this up. This is what Revelation says. People don't understand it because they're like, how in the world is, you know, all this landmass going away and changing and all of this? Just is. <laughs> hey, is, it, you know, is it a nuclear bomb or earthquake or what is it going to be? But, you know, this is what we're expecting. Right. It says you will see the fulfillment of many prophecies. Thank you. Um, prophecies, yeah. They, we've been told all the way from, from Genesis that this was going to happen to the earth. Mm -hmm. Even from Noah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if, I mean, there's there's prophecies in there. Remember, remember the prophecy that he gave Abraham about the 400 years, mm -hmm. and he even started telling them then that this event was going to happen. Mm -hmm. All dealing with because of our evilness, yeah. Mm -hmm. 70. Do not be confused, because before the closing of the sixth seal, great things shall happen. The heavenly bodies shall show great signs, the nations of the earth shall lament, and of this planet three quarters shall disappear, and one quarter only will remain, in which the seed of the Holy Spirit shall grow as new life. Okay, so he's saying that there's something going to happen at the closing of the sixth seal, so... Now that this is a tech, he's being real technical here. It's letting you know that you know at the end of the sea seal, there's going to be a an event too. So and it's going to be an earthquake involved. Let me say when those surrounded by me, or you know, find themselves uh, uh, united with the law, there will the earth and you, know, you remember that that was mm -hmm. 55 verse seven. Mm -hmm. Well, he's saying that's the close of the sea seal. He said when you see that event, um, don't get it confused. There's going to be a shaking then too. But this one here is the big moment, Joe. But this is when, you know, like I say, a big continent is going to be disappearing and stuff. Mm -hmm. Three quarters shall disappear and one quarter only will remain in which the seed of my Holy Spirit shall grow in a new life. Now, you know, a lot of people speculate on their country saying, yeah, this is my country. We, we're going we're gonna to survive. We're going to be part of this. That's going to survive. Well, I'm just wondering if this is and tell me if I got if I if I got the events right, the steps of the event right. Well, all of this devastation happening, all of this turmoil, seemed like this would be the great time for the Antichrist to appear. Is this is is this when he will appear to say, um, "Hey, I have a solution for all of this"? I think he appears. Yeah, he appears during this time, and this cover this chapter doesn't cover him uh, much at all. But, you know, he appears during the worst time. He's, he's the one that's supposed to come and say, you know, I know why all of this is happening. I'm, I can help you to, you know, I can help everybody to, you know, be safe and, you know, have food or whatever. But then he turns out to be a bad guy. 71. Humanity will begin a new existence united by one single doctrine one single language and one single bond of peace and brotherhood so you got this one single people that's left on this planet after the rest of the planet is gone and you got this group that's in this refuge area so now they all speak in one language i guess eventually they will you know whatever they it'd be a spanish english you know just africa it'd be all kinds of languages just mixed up together as everybody have to learn to communicate with one another but it's going to be one single doctrine you know, one, one, and that's his. That's that, you know, spiritual Trinitarian Marian doctrine, mm -hmm. which is, you know, you know, truth, spirit and truth. I speak to you of the pain to which you have made yourself creditors, which you have been accumulating and which shall overflow 
when the hour comes. Yeah, so we've been building this up. You are building this up. I am building this up. We are doing this. You say, well, I ain't doing nothing. Well, we're being selfish. You know, we, we should be actively going out to do stuff for other people, and we are not. So we are we, we were given this material, and this is just one example. We were given these um, this uh, abundance of food or, or wealth or whatever it is that we have so that we can go out and share it. And instead of going out and share it, we just ate it ourselves, and you know, and 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 that was wrong. So now we have heart disease. Now we have high blood pressure, we obese or whatever, because you know we've done this thing, and, we, and so we're paying for it, and we're going to continue to pay. And he says, and it's just going to get. It's just the only thing about the tribulation is that it's all going to come to where we're going to pay at the at the last. At the last minute, it's like everything that you have to do, you're gonna be, you're gonna cough it up right then at that minute. All of the pain that you're due, you're gonna receive it right then. All of the troubles, every every stain. Uh, if, if so you can imagine, it's, it's just gonna be real bad for some people. Whereas some other people is gonna be bad, but maybe not so bad as they weren't so bad of a spirit, so bad of a person. Whereas other ones, you know, it's gonna be ridiculous. I would never offer such a cup to my children, but in my justice I can allow you to gather the fruit of your evil, your arrogance, and your selflessness, so that you may turn, repenting again to me. See, and that's what's the purifying part of it is, is that it's targeted to us. The stuff that I'm going to go through is the result of what I've done. So that's what's going to, you know, purify me and make me realize the error of my ways. And then it's after this period that I can I can be a child of God. I can be one of his people. It may take another lifetime to do it. Like, like Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. You don't have to be born again, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't going to make it this right. Men have defiled my power and my justice by profaning with their science, the temple of nature, in which all is harmony, and my judgment shall be inexorable. Yeah, and and the reason why we they have done this, we've done this. I I'm, guess I should call myself a scientist too. Is we did not think on the Father when we were out here exploring all these elements and you know subparticles and you know all of this. Nobody took the time to say, uh, Father, should we be doing this? And how should we be doing this? And what should we be doing with it? We just looked at it, you know, how can we get rich off of it? And if that involved, you know, creating, you know, something destructive to harm man, and so be it. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. This is all about the money and power. Money and power. You know, people, a lot of people die from, from your stuff that you invented. You know, who cares, you know? The elements shall be unleashed. The cosmos shall move, and the earth tremble. Then there will be horror amongst men, and they will want to flee, but there will be nowhere to go. Yeah, so you're talking about elements being unleashed. We already talked about those, earth, wind, and fire. What's mm -hmm. the other one? Earth, wind, fire, and water. Water, yeah. It's easy to see how those would be unleashed. But the cosmos shall move. Stars? Is that yeah, we, about we, the stars and the firmaments and things? Well, we are talking about, you know, um, something coming from outer space and hitting the planet. You know, it's, it's some type of, it's something supposed to hit the planet. Um, a lot of people say in the bureau, but that to me seems like it happens later on. This this event that's about to hit the planet is not the last event. There's going to be another event that's that. It's going to take place before, you know, this rock is completely annihilated. But there is something going to come out of the planet. You know, a lot of people who study that kind of stuff, I, I can only listen to those guys, but they they talk about how this, this uh, Nibiru planet has a tail associated with it. And some of those particles from the, from the tail is a you know, planet to hit the earth. That could be what he's talking about. Because they will wish to restrain... The unchained chain forces, but will not be able. Yeah, because they're going to feel responsible. See, the thing about it, you say, what jumps out to me is that they will not be able. 
See, we learn in the Third Testament of the Bible that we can't control the elements. Mm -hmm. But while these people are not prepared to control the elements, it's because, well, as I said it, they're not prepared. They didn't, they didn't study what true prayer is. They didn't, you know, um, understand what it takes for your prayers to reach, you know, where the mark where they where they want to be. You you can imagine a person who's out there being as av av as az. Atheist? AZ, I have tried to make up a word. I can't spit it out. <laughs> but he's being an atheist, you know, right right now. He's he's blaspheming the Lord, he's talking on, he's being proud and he's arrogant. Where you can imagine when, you know, something bad happens to him, he, he could send up a prayer. But how likely is that is he to hear an answer from that prayer? He doesn't know how to pray. He doesn't know who to pray to. He's praying to a being that he's been blasphemous towards. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the angels that's supposed to help us. Right. And, and and so these angels are now going to react to his 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 plea and call. Why are they going to do that? You know, when when you know, so you can imagine, you know, his his prayers is going to be a little futile there sometimes. I don't want to say that. I'm trying not to say that the Lord doesn't answer prayers or doesn't hear prayers, but because he, he does, but. Gonna be a lot of people hollering and crying, Father, Father, and they ain't gonna get no, no answer. Or they will feel responsible and repenting too late for their recklessness and imprudence. They shall seek death to escape the punishment. Yeah, that's what we we're talking about earlier. People right. are gonna want to die. Revelation said they're gonna want to die, but mm -hmm. that death is gonna flee from them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they can't die, you know. And you know that's the kind of stuff we're, we're talking about. I, I was listening to a dream. And I do listen to you know, people's dreams sometimes. And the guy was saying how when the country was invaded and all of these troopers were walking through in his dream, how, you know, instead of people, you know, fighting back and grabbing their weapons and going to fight, a lot of them just committed suicide. And, you, can, and, you know, so that's the kind of stuff we're talking about, the horror where people would just rather go than deal with it. But trying to, but committing suicide and it just doesn't happen. Like drinking uh thing of poison and it just nothing happens. Yeah, or that, or it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't quite work. I don't know. Mm -hmm. The thing about a suicide, we doesn't, we don't escape anything in suicide. Suicide, even before the tribulation or whenever, if if you committed a suicide, which we learn in the Third Testament, that you actually are tormented. You still are woken to your conscience, which asks you, why did you have no faith? You know? mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, and, and so you don't escape through suicide. So that may be what they're talking about. They thought they was going to just close their eyes and be gone. And it's like they committed suicide and they woke up in the daggone spirit world with their conscience mashing on them now. And that's a, that's that's some serious pain. That conscience is, is described as very painful. It says nothing, on, nothing can happen to your body that is equivalent to the amount of pain that your conscience is going to put on you. Oh, how much suffering would be avoided if men knew their gifts. But they have preferred to remain blind or sleeping while they allow the times of great pain to come even closer. Yeah, we have many, many gifts. And, you know, I'm, I'm new to the Third Testament. I'm new to a lot of these gifts we have, like controlling the element, like um, the power of prayer, like, you know, um, just all kinds of gifts we have. We, 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 can, we can do stuff. We can communicate with people on other people. You know, beings on other planets, it's all kinds of stuff that we have, you know, powers to do. A lot of people want to say they're superpowers, you know, they you can get on the internet and on YouTube, especially when you search superpowers or of, you know, the father's people or whatever. But these are not necessarily super, it's just they were always there, we just didn't know we had them kind of powers. You know, but it says, but they have preferred to remain blind and sleeping. The reason why we, we can't enjoy these powers that we all have is because we are disobedient to his law. Because we don't follow and do what he say, we, we, we give up on these gifts. You know, you can't you imagine he wouldn't allow us to have the best of both worlds. We're going to be disobedient, yet we're going to be all powerful. You know, able to, you know, throw big heavy rocks or run. What are, you know, the power they had in the Old Testament. Right. You know, 77? Well, before we get out of 77, it says, allow times of great pain to come ever so closer. So you think on your family members 
who are avoiding this conversation. They don't really want to know what the scripture says about what's going to happen. And and so they turn the TV back on and they start to watch, you know, their favorite, you know, shows or whatever. So but the, what they're doing is they're wasting time. They could be preparing for some of this stuff. You can, we can get ahead of a lot of this stuff so it don't it don't hurt us. We don't have to um, wait to the last minute to, to suck down all of that bitterness at one time. You know, you could take a sip now and a sip later. You know. And, and try to you know get rid of some of it, but they're just they're just waiting to you know they get it all at one time, and it's sad when you start to think about your mom, your dad, your grandparents, how hard this thing is gonna come down on you know some of us. My doctrine comes to enlighten you so that you may free yourselves of the great suffering announced for humanity through the prophets of past eras. Now he's talking about the Third Testament in the Bible. It unlocks spirit and truth. It tells us what we have to do. It tells us where our faults are. It tells us, you know, uh, how to correct these faults. It tells us, you know, a lot of information that if we start to practice and apply it, we can escape a lot of this stuff that's going on and it's going to go on. You, you, you don't feel a lot of this stuff, Stacey. You may not... You may not know it or not, but you know you're you're a little bit sheltered these days. You have your own trials and your own issues, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of suffering going on in the world right now. There's a lot of pain, a lot of fear, a lot of anguish as you know as we see all of this stuff going on in the world, and you know you you he's protecting you from it. Right. Mm -hmm. It is in the elevation of your lives that you can find the power or virtue to save yourselves. From the actions of the unchained elements. Yeah, virtue. You get, and, and that's how Hermes Academy started. It's, it, the Hermes Academy is based on a book called The Shepherd of Hermes, mm -hmm. which is found in the apocryphal uh, doctrine. I think it's actually in the Lost Books of the Bible yeah. or the Forgotten Books of Eden. Mm -hmm. But it teaches virtues. It teaches that there are 12 virtues. How many of them can we name? Mm -hmm. uh, right. Patience, faith, consonants. Consonance, power, uh, long suffering, cheerfulness, um, charity, charity. Um, that's seven. We need about five more. <laughs> and and these are these are virtues that that he's talking about. That if we both well, we I ain't gonna say if we I say we have to have these virtues in our life, using them every day. You know I may not be able to name them and. and until I get the opportunity, you know, to, to be patient or whatever, you, we have to use these in our life, and that's what's going to um, help us through. What does it say? Ele elevation of your lives that you can find. See, it is in the elevation of uh, your lives that you can find the power or virtue to save yourselves from the actions of the unchained elements. See, when See, not only are there 12 good virtues, there are also 12 opposite ones. Mm -hmm. And that would be the, not the, what's the opposite of elevation? That would be when you descend into, mm -hmm. you know, go down in your life. And so, so you can imagine, or you can understand what he's saying when he said you, you're elevating your, your being, you're elevating your way of thinking. That's, that's what these virtues are about. And he and he's saying to save yourselves from the actions of the unchained elements. So it is the lack of these virtues that is causing the uh, the, the the elements to become unchained in the first place. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Mm -hmm. You are. You are. Um, when we go on to finish, read it, and yeah, it will, go ahead. Make, it will make more sense. For it is not the weapons of faith and prayer alone that will give you the victory over the and adversities of life. That faith and prayer must be accompanied by a life that is virtuous, clean, and good. So that is telling me that, you know, you're talking about the virtues. So, you know, like in church, we are um, led to, to, we're raised to believe that, you know, it's just about faith and prayer. And he's saying, no. That it's also about these virtues as well. So yeah. when we're when um, you're talking about you know making these changes in your life, you know sometimes we think about 
oh, I got to do all this and I got to prep this and I got to put down this. And No, just start with the little things. Start doing charity. Start helping others. Start having brotherhood. And he's saying that those things are 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 as important too. Those are those are steps that you can be making as well. Seventy nine. Soon a time shall begin in which there will be a great happenings for the world. The earth will tremble and the sun shall cause glowing rays to burn its surface. Yeah. Now. Going back to this, this is this is scriptural stuff, and you know it ain't saying anything different than revelations and everything. In fact, it is it is making a whole lot of this stuff clear. All of this stuff lines up, guys. I promise you, it all lines up. And so, what we hear about the sun being you know harmed in in Matthew and Revelations, we learn here that what's going to happen is man is going to roll the sky away. He's going to do something that's going to roll back the sky. So that there's, it's, it's like all of this ozone that we've heard about. It's like he disrupt the ozone layer or something. And now the sun is able to scorch the earth. And, you know, all of this EMP ass stuff they're talking about. I could have, have they thought about that part? You know, are they sure they, they got the idea that if you, you know, uh, detonate a nuclear bomb, a nuclear bomb so high up in the air that it'll create an EMP that will knock out all of the circuitry for you know all of the area that you know that it covers or whatever. But have they thought about what what they actually gonna do to the atmosphere when they do that? When they blow up a nuclear bomb in the atmosphere, what's gonna happen? Mm -hmm. It is a sky well, That's what it. I, yeah, that's what it seems like. Go ahead. The continents from one end to another shall be touched by the pain. Every corner of the earth will suffer the purification, and no creature shall escape the hardship and atonement. See, but this thing is fear, and I, I wish I could, I, I could stress it, you know, more that this thing is a fear that we're talking about. We need to wake up. We need to get start getting prepared because, you know, we ain't ready for this. You know, and it ain't it ain't gonna be no just pleasant death. You know, a lot of us think it's just gonna be a pleasant little death. Yeah, you know. When I finish partying and my time is up, you know, I'll close my eyes and that'll be that on that. No, man, we're talking about a purification. We're talking about hardship. Hardship. And he said, ain't not, no creature's going to escape. Gnats, flies, everything going to be trying to die. After this great chaos, the nations will recover calmness and the elements will quiet. Yeah, so, so it's only a period in time. It's only seven years that this thing is supposed to last. And then after seven years. Only, only. Yeah, well, you know, and we've gotten a few of it. We've got a little bit of it behind us. Mm -hmm. You know, we're already a, at least a year in now. And um, after, after after it's over with, you know, everything returns back to normal. But After the storm, my light of the world, the rainbow of peace shall appear. All will return to their laws, their order, and their harmony. And we hear about this rainbow in Revelations, um, but is, going to, going to, is there going to be another rainbow? Something about a rainbow. We hear about, like I said, we hear about it in the Old Testament. We hear about it in the New Testament too. We hear about it in Revelations. I don't know if I understand what it is going to, what this rainbow is about, but you know, hope I'm around to see it. Again, you will see the clean skies and the fertile fields, the water in their current. Shall rain regain their purity, and the sea shall be gentle. There shall be fruit on the trees, flowers on the prairies, and abundant harvest. Abundant harvest. We talked about before how these volcanoes are going to fertilize the earth. There's, but the, but the thing is, in this time period, everything is returning about to normal. This is the you know things start to you know the birds start chirping. Everything goes back to being pleasant on earth, and there is no more bad stuff that happens to the earth for a thousand years. The earth, so you can imagine this place. The, the, the earth has been purified, all wickedness has been removed from the earth, all wicked people are now gone. Um, all vices, there's no cigarettes around, there's no booze, if it's can, whatever it's can, whatever the father, I ain't gonna sit here and name stuff because I don't know his mind like that, mm -hmm. but whatever is considered bad and unholy and he don't want it it's going to be gone off the planet right so the thing is do we want to be there you know do 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 we want to be there 
and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna speak for you know everybody. Everybody you know can make their own choice or whatever. I just want to let you know that there is a choice. You can you know live in this land that he's talking about after the purification. It's just going to require marriage to get there. A man purified and healthy shall return to feeling worthy, and will find prepared the road of his ascension and return to me. Yeah. So and and. A unique thing I learned, you know, from the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug the other day was, you know, how man has descended from Adam. I had never thought about how at one point we were in tune with Adam in the Garden of Eden and it was because of our sin that we were kicked out. But yet we're going back to that place again. You know, we're going back to that place. It's, it's what we're going back to is like the Garden of Eden where not only, you know, like you said, uh, fruits on the trees, flowers in the prairies, abundant harvests, but man will actually be communing with the Father again. We'll be talking to him. We will be, you know, we'll be able to hear his, you know, hear hear, hear him as he, you know, walks through the, you know, cool of the day or whatever. All beings shall be cleansed and free of stains from their very beginning, so that they may, may be worthy of possessing the new time that approaches. For I must found the new humanity on firm ground. Yeah, he said, all beings shall be cleansed and free of stain from their very beginning. These are the people who will die during the tribulation. Remember, it says, you know, a large portion of humanity will go away. A large portion of humanity is not going to survive the tribulation. They are going to perish. They are going to die. But what happens to them? They are reincarnated. Not, they, they are reincarnated into beings that will come back to the earth. But now, when they come back to the earth, they have no stains. When you when you was born, you already had strikes against you, big strikes. When I was born, I already had strikes against me. But when these people come back as babies, they're not going to have any strikes against them because they will have been purified. Or every everything is made clean for them. They have a clean slate and an and a incorruptible body because there's no diseases, no ailments, there's no sin to make them sick. That there's no vices or anything to get them trapped or anything. This is this is this is a perfect planet that we're talking about. Um, you know, after after the, the purification. That's it. Yep, that's that on that. Looks like we're coming close to the end of this thing. Next section will be love and justice and the mercy of God. Well, we're gonna close it out. Anything else on that one? So I, I, I really learned a lot from that, um, just um, the fact that um, that you don't wait to the last minute to start preparing, that you can start doing things now that your cup of bitterness will, uh, you will start draining some of it, the cup of bitterness now. Yeah, and you know, because it's not only through pain, pain is one option, but there's repentance and there's charitable deeds too. So yeah, you can, you can, you, can, you can, well, you wipe away a multitude of sins by, you know, go fixing some sandwiches and taking them down to the moment with people or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith.